correctly. That's a good point. That's a good thing. I didn't, um, I didn't think about that. There's no chemistry now. There's no, uh, there's uh, there. She almost seems like she could throw up looking at him, speaking to him. It is very cold. Very, very So cold. that's I the mean, thing. Now I'm not into anyone's bedroom, but just like, oh, picture she's not it. no, they're not like, this and, is how people get divorced. Like you truly just look at the person and you're like the thought of it. Like I'm horny. But the thought of it, because I hate you as a person, or I just am not into you anymore after 20 sex, you can't go and have sex with that. I know there's hate sex and all that, but you just, it doesn't work that way when you're just, yeah, they seem totally like disgusted with each other. Disgusted. And I, Personally, I think it's a not a great sign if they've been separated since June of 2023, July, and now they haven't lived together. Now, my couples therapist says that lots of times couples move out and they work on it and they move back in and you can be stronger than ever. My, my couples therapist also says cheating can save relationships. So I, you know, but I, I think looking at them, there is no, no, I think they're done. I think they're thing, figuring agree. out how to untangle things, doing what's best for their daughters. And, you know, you and I've talked about this. A lot of couples have arrangements till their kids are out of high school. And I, I don't think that ever works. I don't know why they wait, but maybe it's just easier to get Portia through high school and then separate. But I, I, I don't think that they're coming back. I would agree with you on all of that. I don't think they're ever coming back. It's Beverly Hills. I really don't think it has anything to do with Morgan. It's over. It's just I, I actually, over. I do kind of think Kyle's a lesbian though. You do? Don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. She definitely, I know a lot of women in their 40s and 50s who leave in divorce husbands of 20 years and are lesbians. Yeah, I do. I do. Speaking of lesbians. Her, I think that. Yeah, I think no, they, I mean, I, in retrospect, I could see it, not to stereotype, but a call goes to be a little bit of, you know, dipping in the lady pond vibe. And I could see that like full time for her. Yeah, 100%. Know, this is speculation. Go on, because then I want to ask you about Brandy Glanville. Okay, well then let's, I was just going to talk about the looks from, uh, the looks from, uh, we have, I mean, God, we're going to have to do a whole nother show. Um, we didn't talk about Candace Dillard and uh, her lawsuit is, you know, Michael Darby is dropped. Can we please bring Michael Darby back? I miss Michael Darby. I miss Michael Darby. Okay, let's talk about Brandy Glanville for a minute though, since that's well, she's, really important. Have you watched her OnlyFans? She's on OnlyFans. I mean, do you, do you believe, yeah. uh, this is where I need, see, Bethany needs to counsel her. Like, I want real numbers. How much money does Brandy Glanville have left in her bank account? Well, she says for six months because of Carolyn Manzo and Carolyn basically ruined her life. Um, she had earned no money at all. And that um, that uh, she had to turn to OnlyFans. I, I wonder if she's made any money. Um, she, and she said it's feet. She said it's feet pictures because her face was busted. I mean, these are her words, basically, not mine. And I guess that's how she supported herself as a living. I don't know. It's so, it, why do you think that she's taken this so personal? Like, why do you think Brandy's been so emotionally affected? Just, I mean, to me, I actually feel really bad for Brandy. Like, I think Brandy just okay. thought this was a flirty, fun joke. And and now, like, her life is seems, I want to give Brandy a hug. I, I feel like- she, I loved having her on this podcast. She's never coming back to Bravo. So, I mean, we already established that. Vicky just said, I mean, the brilliance of Victoria Gumbelson, um, that we're never going to see this season of uh, Girls Trip. I mean, okay, Vicky, we have been saying that for nine months now. Like, get with the program. Um, I do feel bad for her. I have not checked out her OnlyFans. I will check out her OnlyFans. Look, I mean, I had Courtney Tilia, one of my great interviews. I loved her. Just had her on this year. She was a school teacher making $47,000. She would have gotten her pension, I think, in 20 years for $100,000 or whatever it was. And she makes $1 million a year on OnlyFans. So, I am all of the she shows, I think, a little more than her feet, but love Courtney Celia. Shout out to Courtney. Listen to that interview. Love her. Um, I see I don't shame or anything. Go for it, Brandy. But right, like just 
go for it. Make make the money. But it is, I feel bad for her too. I do. I just think she's so physically impacted by this. And I, I just feel like when somebody has a reaction like that, they're not guilty. I think that they they are so remorseful of their actions. I think they were just truly being themselves, which I'm not saying that it's right. She obviously probably misread the situation or Carolyn just wants a bag. I don't know. But I, yeah, I just feel bad for Brittany. Or a little bit of all of the above. Yeah. No victim shaming, but I think Carolyn does want a bag. We've all been in situations, right, where, you know, you get drinking, you're having a good time and, you know, I don't know, whatever, you touch somebody, you know, I mean, right? We've all been where we think like, oh, it's all good and fun. You don't really know how the other person's going to interpret it. Or maybe in that moment, they kind of interpret it, you know, a little flirty, but then later they feel violent. It's hard. It's really hard. I want to give Brandy a hug. I got to go find her here in Hollywood. And um Maybe I'll do a feet video with her. Um, I mean, you okay. get you get your bag too, girl. Yeah, always. Right. Uh, wait, I do want to ask you: Do you have more inside scoop about Candy and Michael Darby's two million dollar lawsuit? Michael Darby alleged that Candy Gal ruined, you know, his reputation in the DMV. He's a builder. I've uh, been a long time developer there. And uh, Mr. Darby, the lawsuit thrown out. So they obviously did not feel that there was enough evidence. I'm sure they probably argued, her attorneys probably argued, dude, you put yourself on reality TV. You're a public figure. I mean, defamation is so hard to prove. I mean, me saying, you know, I mean, me saying that like Messi G. Gogacita and Josefina Gogacita have another lawsuit against them. And, you know, why are they always being sued? And they're shady business people. You know, the Gorgasitas don't get into business with the shady Gorgasitas. That's not defamation. So everybody back your asshole up. The saying that I'm a Heather McDonald and I listen to all the comments that are made about me out there and I slip into people's DMs when they say bad things about me and say, I'm watching you and I'm listening. Oh, when can Heather, we? Okay, God, I want to ask you about that. When Heather That's McDonald funny. and the rat, the rat that scurries, that is Tam. She loves Gouda. She loves Gouda cheese and she's in the corner getting some. When they're on Heather's podcast with Shannon and they say, you know, Jim Bellino's trampoline park closed down because people die on the premises. That is a defamation suit. It is an actual fact that you are stating. And if someone did not die and the business is hurt because of that, that is a defamation suit. Saying the saying the Gorgas are fucking shady. So saying Michael Darby sucks a huge dick every night. Which that is not defamation. 